You're listening to the Untrapped Podcast with Keith Kalfas. We are live. What's up? This is Keith Kelfis, and I just want to tell the origin story of this lawn care landscaping community here on YouTube. And it's grown to several thousand YouTube channels. And if you're one of us, what up, though? If you have a YouTube channel, you should start one. If you don't have one, start one. And but I want to talk about where this all began, because it's really important, I believe, for those of you to know this who haven't been around all the way back, starting in 2013. So What's up, guys? I'm Keith Kelfis, and I'm one of the OGs of this lawn care and landscaping community where there's literally, it's got to be hundreds of thousands of people now that specifically are on YouTube and coming to YouTube, making videos, interacting. And I love this community. I'm definitely, I'm actually upset that GIE Expo got canceled because that's every time, every year, we all come together and shake hands and meet and we see how big this community is. But This community has had its ups and downs, it's had its drama, it's had its makeups, its fights, all types of stuff. But I'm going to tell you this story. Can you hear me clear? What's up, Adrian Best, Rubster, Joe Schwartz, the lawn care givers, Chuck the repair guy, improved landscape. All right, guys. It was 2013. I already had several YouTube channels. And I go on YouTube and I type in lawn care, I type in landscaping, and like nobody is vlogging, nobody is making any videos about their business. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Now, I had started my business in late 2011. And once I got the business established and off the ground to the point where I could pay my bills, (laughs) I wanted to go into YouTube. And I'm telling this story from my perspective, but I'm going to start talking about Stan Genetic, Geek to Freak. If you guys hear about this Geek to Freak guy, who's this Geek to Freak guy? This guy's a straight up legend. He's awesome. B&B Lawn Care, there is a Spencer's Lawn Care. He's an original OG. And there's there's quite a few others. So I go on YouTube and I type this in. And it's a ghost town. None of this existed. None of these channels existed. Today, you see lawn care and landscaping videos all over YouTube. I'm telling you, it was a ghost town. It didn't exist. Just back in late 2013, there was only a few people doing this. And there was a guy way back in the day, going all the way back to 2007, 2006, that I used to watch. His name was The Lawn Gopher. I don't know where this guy is today, but around 2011, 2012, I think he stopped uploading videos. There's lawn care millionaire, Jonathan Potoshnik. He's been uploading forever, right? And then there was somebody else that uploaded once in a while. And maybe a couple random videos of some a couple people cutting grass, but nothing. It didn't exist, this entire category. Can you imagine that? I'm just trying to pound that in. It didn't exist. So I look at this thing, and I wanted to jump into YouTube in a specific niche and start a whole vlog about my business. But... At that time, I decided to, there were a couple guys on the radar. There was this guy named Geek to Freak that popped up all of a sudden. And Geek to Freak went on to get, you know, get millions and millions of subscribers. But this guy had like 15 or 1700 subscribers. I think that's all there was. And that's all. Maybe one or two other guys just starting their channels had a couple, couple hundred subscribers, maybe 40 to 60 subscribers. That's so I took this internet marketing course all about it was an 80 hour long course it cost 2000 bucks i locked down and vegetated in front of my tv and i took notes all winter long and they told me to do this this guy named evan pagan so i wrote it down and i went and i looked in the mirror this is just what i did i feel kind of vulnerable sharing this but i went and i looked in the mirror keith kelfis did in my bathroom of my crappy little one bedroom apartment with an eviction notice, we got it paid by then. But I looked in the mirror and I said, in 24 months, my name, Keith Kelfus, will be the number one name in the world, synonymous with the search term landscaping on YouTube, period. So there I went nonstop and I started uploading constant videos. And there's this thing called the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. 
and people are calling each other out. Anybody here remember that? So I went crazy on YouTube and I started uploading videos every day to every other day and just turned my entire small business into like this crazy ass reality show where I was like humping backpack blowers and doing backflips and mulch and making funny faces and just going insane and vulnerably screaming into the camera and sharing everything. And sometimes I was uploading eight to 10 videos a day. Every word in the search term and in the descriptions was landscaping, landscaping, lawn care, landscaping, landscaping, just constant notifications. And I got on the radar of this guy named Geek to Freak and we became friends and this community started to grow. So this wasn't me who started this, right? I didn't start this thing at all, but there was like four or five of us. And then by the time I think a 2014 rolled around, there was the GIE Expo, which happened every year anyways. But this geek to freak guy had this amazing lawn care channel that he had videos that would make you laugh, that would make you cry. He was amazing. But he had this idea. He goes, let's throw a YouTube rally. Uh, B&B Lawn Care, uh, Blake Albert, he started his channel too. Let's start a YouTube rally at the GIE Expo in Louisville, Kentucky. And let's just meet in the parking lot and hang out. And then We'll go to Pleasure Ridge Pizza, Pleasure Ridge Pizza, okay? And then Stan Genetic. He didn't even have a YouTube channel at that time. He was just getting started. He had a podcast. He had he wanted nothing to do with YouTube at all. And today he has almost five hundred thousand subscribers. And I'm on the phone with Stan, like, dude, Stan, this is back like early 2014. You need to start a YouTube channel. He's like, why? I'm like, you just you have to, dude. And so we meet in the parking lot by the Blue Roller Coaster at the GIE Expo, and there was like, I think where there was like seven of us. There was just seven of us. That's all. And I think a couple other people came and said hi. At max, it might have been 12 to 14 throughout the entire day. Didn't exist. Nobody cared. And then we went to Pleasure Ridge Pizza and it was a couple more people. I think we had 14 people. I have the original, like people brought their wives and stuff. And that was the entire YouTube rally. It was 14 people. And we ate pizza and we all hung out and had a couple beers and went back to the expo and went home. The next year, Geek to Freak is like, I want to do this again. Let's meet at Pleasure Ridge Pizza. So the community starts growing, right? The next year, there was like 60 or 70 people at Pleasure Ridge Pizza. Like, we're like, oh my God, there's like 70 people here, right? By that time, there was like 20, I'm sorry, 15 to 20 YouTube channels. And a couple guys had like maybe like five to 6,000 subscribers. And then everybody else, like, that's all just a few. And then all of a sudden, like, uh, what's up life of Oscar GP East Tennessee lawn care. I think the guy wants beer. All right. So we do this thing at pleasure Ridge pizza again. We're like, if there's, if there was like 14 people the first year and 70 people the next year, what's it going to be like the next year? So that was 20, uh, 13, 14, 2015. I think it was, yeah, it's 2015, it was, it was 13, 14, and then 2015, there was like 298 to th something 300 people showed up at Pleasure Ridge Pizza. Everybody was there because of YouTube. Like the place was packed, dude. Like the whole balcony and patio was packed and like you couldn't even walk. And then all of a sudden, like it was the first time me as a YouTuber I had gotten the experience of meeting a bunch of people and having all these people like recognize me and be like, Oh, Keith Kalfas, I watch your videos. And they were like, you know, I, I don't care about stuff like that, but like, I love meeting people. It's just funny when you watch somebody's videos all the time and then you actually meet them in person, you probably would have stuff that you would want to talk to them and say to them. Right. So there's like 300 people and Greg, who's geek to freak, he was like, dude, oh my God. Like he kind of had like a panic attack. He didn't know what to do because there were so many damn people there and he was giving out t-shirts and stuff and a lot of cool people, original OGs who are still here today. But he's like, I don't know what we're going to do. And then Naylor, lawn care rookie, he, he was there. So the next year we had to find a different place to do it because it was not going to work. And that's when Naylor took over and did it in the Louisville mega cavern and started getting some of these sponsored uh, like Echo and these companies to sponsor and bring this thing into a bigger venue. Because so then it went 300 people, 600 people, 1000 people. And then what happened was these channels just started blowing up and it was kind of like it was geek to freak and it was Stan and then Greg Chisholm. It was my channel. I said B&B, Naylor, there was a guy named Tennessee Lawn Care, there was Spencer's Lawn Care, and then 
all these other little channels started. And there was these different waves of channels that were starting each year as some guys were hitting like, oh, my God, you hit 10,000 subscribers, 17,000 subscribers. Like it was unheard of to hit 10,000 subscribers with the lawn care landscaping channel. Nobody cared. But this thing started getting momentum and rolling. By the time 2016 hit, it was just like huge. Now you had channels that had, you know, 20, 30, 40 thousand subscribers and the thing started like a bell curve it just started quantifying and multiplying on itself and then you had each year tens of thousands of people coming into this community but it all started all the way back to that little tiny nucleus of just a few people making videos and not being afraid to put their message out there you know, the reason that people don't make these types of videos is because you're like, what are you talking about? This is the way vlogging and making videos used to be. Like, I'm busy running my business. We have to get to the next lawn. We got to get to the next job. We have shit to do. Why would I take a camera out and videotape it? You could get in trouble on a customer's property. Like, nobody cares to watch that. Why would anybody ever care to watch it? And I was vlogging all the way back in 2006. 2005, 2004. I was making lawn care vlogs in 2005. I have one on YouTube, an old one. And even then I was like, why would anybody ever want to watch this? So there was a time and I think it was 2014. I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but some of you might know what I'm talking about. There is so much there is as these channels started growing, YouTube was different back then. And it's not like it is today. Today, people watch what they say when it comes to like talking shit. They don't just directly talk shit about other people. And it's fun to talk shit sometimes, right? But back in like 2014, there was guys like straight up just blasting each other. Oh, yeah. Some other guys that came on the scene. I know it was top notch lawn care. He's been around forever. But and he doesn't have anything to do with like shit talking. But there was people just coming on and cussing each other out and calling each other out. And then they were making response videos. And these were people that were ready to straight up fight. Like they're straight up chewing, chewing tobacco and spitting and like, like, I'll, I'll drive across the country and I will kick your ass. And then we're like, oh, at the GIE, there's going to be a big fight. Oh, my God. Like these people, like it was crazy. And it got to the point where people were threatening each other and shit. And this was like 2014 and everybody knew about it and people were getting on the phones and shit. Like it was this really tense situation because nobody had ever experienced anything like this before of the vulnerability of putting your personal information in your channel, like putting your business and your personal life all over the internet. Like people don't really do that like that back then, especially in this type of community, because having a small business should be kind of a private thing. You don't put all that stuff all over the internet and people were, it was heated. It was exciting. And there are some people who would like, <laughs> I can't even say, I just can't say I'll open up a big old can of worms, but to watch all that stuff happen, that's the type of stuff that like built this community and that was the nucleus of it. And you see some of these guys that are lawn care landscape YouTubers, they're getting like equipment, they're getting mowers and weed whips and backpack blowers. Some of these guys are getting paid and getting brand deal sponsorships. That stuff didn't even exist back in the day. Like you'd be lucky to make nothing off of making YouTube videos. We made the videos because we loved making the videos and it was truly, it was a different era. It was a different time. It was fun. It was exciting. And we we're having so much fun making these videos because that's what we wanted to do. And I remember me personally dreaming about like, one of these companies, what if they would send me, what if Steel would send me a free backpack blower just to make a video about it? They would never do that. None of these companies were even open to even having a conversation like that because that stuff didn't exist. So a lot of us are like, okay, it doesn't exist. There's still more on today's edition of the Untrapped Podcast with Keith Kalfas. Guys, if you need help being more organized and being perceived as a professional to your clients and prospective customers, then you got to check out Jobber. Jobber is an awesome software that you can run your entire service business on. You can create invoices, quotes, estimates, work orders. It integrates with your calendar. You can collect money. You can run your whole business on Jobber and grow with it as well. Get your 14-day free trial of Jobber at keithkelfus.com forward slash Jobber. I use Jobber in my business and it's awesome. And now, Keith Kalfas. And then 
once YouTube blew up, and I know like the backstory of like YouTube too. I had a YouTube channel back in 2004 when YouTube first came online as YouTube, right? I was making videos right away. But uh, the internet itself and YouTube and videos, I mean, really 2005, six, seven, it wasn't really a thing in 2008, a little bit more. But right around 2012, something happened where the internet just took off like this. And it literally 4X'd itself. And then by 2014, it like 5X'd itself. Obviously, you know this stuff, but I've been watching all this happen. And it's been from 2014, 15 to 2016, the internet exploded and it just went 100X. And then it just went straight up bell curve like like a spire and now it's like a hundred thousand x of what it was and it's very interesting to be part of that whole thing and see these new cats come online and with youtube channels that didn't get to experience that time of like the beginning stages of youtube in this community very fascinating to me so patrick wheatley i see all your guys' comments mike andy's Bro, Mike Andes, I just watched the video response that you did of me responding to me talking about raising your prices. And I really liked the way that you'll pause and then you'll talk about it. And it's really good. I like it. And I see that your intentions are good. And we vibe off each other. And one thing I want to do on this channel is I don't want I don't really feel comfortable showing people my PL statement and getting through everything. But ever since I've hired a bookkeeper for both my businesses, I have two different businesses that are separate businesses so that have separate P&L statements. It's radically changed the way I have it. my outlook on my business. When you can see where every penny is going, you can see your cost of goods sold and you can see what your net profit is. I mean, it's shocking to see it's like the first quarter and you've done a hundred grand in revenue and you look at how much you actually made based off the size, if you, whether you're out in the field or not, or whether you are how active you are in the business, but it makes you start thinking differently and making different decisions. So the best money that I've invested in my business is definitely having a good accountant having a good bookkeeper because it's helped me see things a lot clearly. And I love what I love about this community and about YouTube and all these videos of these really smart guys who have very successful lawn and landscape businesses is they put these videos out for free right here on YouTube that if you actually just like get over your ego and just dial in and listen to what they're saying, it can help you cut the learning curve shorten the learning curve in your own business so much faster. I know I, I have 94,000 subscribers now. Thank you very much for everybody that subscribes to my channel. And somebody just gave me 20 bucks. Southeast Softwash just gave me $19.99. Well, hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have the super chat thing where you can give me money. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So... You can shorten the learning curve in your business. And that's so important to do because I look back at literally the first five years of my business. They weren't all the same, but gosh, I could have got to where I am so much quicker if I had the information that all you guys have right now. And there's one thing I want to talk about. I'm going to make an entire video on this. There's this itch that you get in the business, some at three years, some at five years, but it's where you hate your business, you want to quit, you can't stand it, you're depressed, you want out, and you want to go do a business and something else, or you start wishing that you would have gotten a degree and done something, or you just, you want out, right? The only reason is you're probably not making the money that you want to make. And so when you don't see any end in sight, you don't see a light at the end of the tunnel, and you can't, and that's the thing that kind of pisses me off about this community is I want to see guys making videos that are vulnerably sharing what's going on inside of their businesses or what they're going through, not complaining or bitching or whining, none of that stuff. But it's as a business owner, it's very hard to, it's not just this community, it's literally everybody. This whole facade of being afraid to vulnerably share who you really are and what you're really going through, that could actually help a lot of people. It you have to like maintain this composure and just hide any bullshit that you have going on. And I know it's easier for some than others, but I'm going to get the fuck off. I don't have any soapbox to be on. I just, I see the guy who's just like I was, who's trapped in a one bedroom apartment or living in a trailer park and, but he's broke. He can't even make his rent or he's killing himself in his business, working like 80 hours a week. And he's 
barely generating enough profit. He's got a baby on the way. Your truck keeps breaking down and you can't get the accurate advice that you need. And then you go on Instagram and you see some dude just post a picture of his brand new 2500 HD dump trucker. And you can't get the this specific advice that you need that's applicable to right where you're at. And I think when you keep looking outside at trying to do something else, you can make yourself stir crazy when it really it's about hunkering down and staying the path and having guts. What I mean is I thought it was impossible. I thought I would lose my business if I raised the prices. I just did a job yesterday thousand dollars and we did a thousand bucks in three hours trimmed up a property and put down some mulch i used to charge about four hundred dollars to do that today it's a thousand it was twelve hundred but they didn't want a couple of these ornamental trees trimmed and i profited 700 bucks by one o'clock and then we go to another job before that we just did a thirteen thousand dollar job an eight thousand dollar job and we're starting another job that's seventy five hundred dollars and they're all at least a fifty fifty percent gross profit margin and see if you grew up poor and on food stamps and shit and you family never hired anybody to do your landscaping let alone cut your lawn or do anything like that it might seem impossible in your mind that somebody would even if they could afford it why the hell would they spend that type of money to have their property maintained? Or why would they pay $10 more to have their lawn cut? They would fire you. But these are the same people that have big screen TVs and Mercedes in the driveway or BMW. They just got off vacation to Hawaii. They're literally paying for their kids to go to college. Like there's a, there's a lot of money floating around and it would just blow your mind. Just like it blows my mind that I still can't believe that a customer just Last week wrote me a check for $8,500 to do their landscaping. And to me, it was like, I do this every day. It's not a big deal. Yet, I would never want to spend $8,500 on my landscaping because I do landscaping. But it's like, there's people who have mad bread. There's people who spend $100,000 to get their landscaping done. It's nothing to them. So comparing what somebody else can do compared to where you're at, it only makes sense between your ears. But it doesn't make sense. It's totally different to them. It's a completely different set of rules. And... If I'd have known this a long time ago, I wouldn't have been stuck in a one-bedroom apartment for five fucking years pulling my hair out (laughs) in a one-bedroom apartment. Many, many nights with my wife upset and feeling like a fucking loser, feeling like a douchebag, feeling like a piece of shit, feeling like a grown-ass man who is a stupid piece of shit because I could not figure out how to get us out of a one-bedroom apartment. And I didn't even feel worthy of it. Running on fear complete fear. Worthiness is what it's all about. It's all about your sense of worthiness. I kind of really went off track here, but I'm really into this worthiness thing. I'm obsessed with it. There's this book by Brene Brown. I see all your comments coming in, by the way. But this book is called The Power of Vulnerability. And she basically sat down with 100 different families, like people that were like poor and broke and sick and dying to people that were poor and happy, to people that were rich and happy, to people that were rich and miserable. And they were trying to find the common denominator of what makes people that are successful and happy and fulfilled feel that way. All these people are giving me money right now. Thank you for all the money. I love all the money. Yellow Jacket Landscaping just gave me 25 bucks, and David McDonald gave me 20 bucks. Why are you guys giving me all this money? I ain't going to say no. I'm I'm not going to say don't give me the money, but like, I promise I'll do good things with it, man. Jesus, this is crazy. (laughs) Thank you. That's another thing. Learning how to receive gifts. If somebody wants to give you a tip or give you money, they're doing it out of reciprocity. They feel good to give you money. It makes them feel good. They're like, hey, man, I like you. I support you helped me or I support you. Here's five bucks. Here's 10 bucks. Here's 50 bucks, whatever that is. My lawn care guy like was cutting my lawn last week. I went outside and I had a $50 bill in my hand. I was like, hey, I still need my invoice, but here's a tip. And I went to give him 50 bucks and he goes, what's that for? He's like, he went like that. I'm like, bro, it's take it. He goes, why? I'm like, because you're awesome, dude. You cut my lawn and you do a great job. I have a landscaping business, yet I don't cut my lawn. It's weird. Whatever. He cuts my lawn. But I gave him like 50 bucks. And he was like, sweet, thanks. And I felt good about that. Like, you know what I mean? So it's reciprocity. 
Wife of Tron, I'm live on YouTube right now. All right, so what was I saying? Worthiness is so important. So Brene Brown, they interview 100 families, and the only common denominator that they could find between the people that were wealthy and happy and had money and were successful and had joyous, abundant lives or the people that were like flat broke is the people who had all the good stuff felt like they were worthy of it. That's the only thing they could find is these people felt like they were worthy of it, right? So think about this. If you draw a box of what you think is possible and then you draw a bigger box of what's actually possible, if what is actually possible is this big, but what you think is possible is only this big, you'll never get outside of that box. You might accidentally hit a jackpot and do something cool, but then you relimit right back down to that little tiny box because that's all that that's your self limiting belief, self self limiting belief. You're limiting yourself because of your own beliefs. How many self-limiting beliefs do you have that you keep looking out into the external world or to all these reasons why you're building all the proof around you? Edward just gave me $50. Thank you for $50. I'm sitting here getting rich on YouTube, man. This is crazy. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> so your self-limiting belief. Here's what we did. Here's, here's what I did. I was looking at all the clients that I had that were low paying nitpicky clients who I was afraid to raise the price on that I was doing their property maintenance for so cheap. I said, but look, I can't raise the prices. Look at all these customers. They're only willing to pay me that much. And when I try to raise the price on them, I lose them. It was a whole victim story. I felt like I was going insane. It was torture, right? Because uh, it's like this, this is like this, this reaffirming self-fulfilling prophecy that you keep cycling it. And because you have real world data that backs up your beliefs, they make your beliefs stronger. So you keep believing that that's reality, but that's not reality. That's just your fucking reality. But then you'll go and campaign for votes and you'll talk to other people that are in similar positions as you are. And then you'll group together with the same types of beliefs. Yet how come there's some people that are outliers that can literally have totally different results in the same exact industry that you have. And it's really, really, it's a hard pill to swallow. But uh, Joshua Latimer said, there's a lot of people that are a lot dumber than you who have figured out how to do it, right? Indy Zona just sent me 20 bucks. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's crazy. So, yeah, my friends, hit the thumbs up button. Smash the thumbs up button. Let's get it to 100 thumbs up. Can we do that? Thank you. There's so many people that are so much dumber than you that have become way more successful than you. So I like to play these little mind games and say, let's do an experiment. I think the power of surrender is very strong. When you finally give up on your own resistance, imagine you're covered you're like you're in a Velcro suit and you're running down a hallway and all these at the hallway is your life and all these things keep snagging you. Your fucked up relationship with your father or how he was an alcoholic or he beat the shit out of you when you were a kid or he just doesn't care no matter how hard you try. He, your father's a piece of shit or how like you're, I don't know, maybe you have a spouse or a significant other. Your partner belittles you and talks down to you and criticizes you and doesn't believe in your dreams and he or she just makes you feel like shit so you don't even want to be intimate with them. I was just reading that about that. In this book right here, Storytime with Keith, maybe you have some really negative person in your life that calls you like five times a week to dump all their problems on you. And, you, and you're afraid to like cut that person off because you're afraid maybe they'll like go do something stupid and die or maybe they're a drug addict. Maybe you have people that you love that are hooked on drugs. Maybe you have your own vices yourself and these demons that are attacking you. I don't know if you have that or not, but I know in my life I've dealt with all sorts of different crazy fucked up issues. And then I go like on the Internet and I see like Lawn Care Millionaire. I loved Lawn Care Millionaire, John, Jonathan Potoshnik. And this guy's awesome. I've learned so much from this guy. But just as an example, I'm like, this guy has like a $10 million business and another business. And like he's so composed and he's so successful. And obviously he has his own problems in his life and challenges, but he's so fucking well composed as a man that you were like, I can't even fucking relate to this guy. But that's what I mean. People don't care. Like, <sighs> I think personal growth comes when you can look out at somebody else who has achieved what you want to achieve, but you can also 
relate to each other's struggle. They say they're successful now, but they've gone through all these crazy fucked up struggles that they've found out how to work through and still build a healthy uh, self-image and self-confidence and get through that stuff and bring the people that they love with them. If you go, wow, if that person went through all that and they still made it, then I can make it. I can make it. I can do this, right? I can do it too. I very do. Oh, what's up, Cecilia Figura? I'm reading your comments. What's up, Bill Hall? You will never stop this video because you're going to be rich by just talking. <laughs> John Isaac. Hello, my friends. So, confidence is your own belief in your ability to figure things out. That's what confidence is. Do you believe you have the ability to figure things out? Do you believe in yourself? Hey, someone just popped up in my head. Sunday, we're doing a tree job on Sunday. I never work on Sundays like that. But my friend William, the tree guy with the beard, he's doing this crane job, like a straight up crane going over a house, picking a tree. And I'm going to go there Sunday morning with my cameras and drone and make a dope ass cinematic video, like about tree work and like the ch slow motion chainsaws with like, it's going to get edited. It's going to go on YouTube and it'd be amazing. What's up, Travis, Vincent, Angel, Big Sounds, Spencer, Tim, uh, David McDonald. Thank you. So my best friend drank himself to death. I never talk about it here on YouTube. He was the best man in my wedding and he was my best friend and he couldn't stop drinking. If you called him an alcoholic and tried to get him to stop drinking, he would use it as a reason to drink. If you were hanging out and having fun with him, he'd use that for a reason to drink. If he got in a fight with his old lady and the shit wasn't going good, he used it as a reason to drink. And somebody who has the disease of alcoholism, for the most part, will keep using it as a reason to drink, right? And I remember that he was admitted to the hospital a few times. And at the end of his rope, he became such a mean and tolerable and vindictive human being that it was hard for me to associate with him. And this was my best friend was pulling me down so low that I didn't even know how to deal with it. I didn't, I didn't even know how to deal with it because I was still swimming for my own life, trying to run my business and pay my bills. I didn't know how to take care of the person that I had looked up to my whole life, that he was the one when, you know, I was going to get into a fight. He was the one who showed up to have my back. Right. And I remember when I got the call that he had died, he had lost all of his weight. He was a pretty big guy, and he went down to bone skinny. When we went to his funeral, I spoke at his funeral, and I talked about how much of an asshole he was. So we used to like play Secret Amana and Sonic the Hedgehog and all these games. When we were kids, uh, he'd say, hey, ride bikes and meet me halfway, and we'll go back to his house. He lived like four miles away, right? So I would ride my bike halfway and he wasn't there. He wouldn't show up. And then I had to ride all the way to his house and be like, you fuck. Like, you said you were going to meet me halfway. He's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. You know what I mean? Like, he was always playing pranks like that. And I go to his grave site once every couple years. And last time I went, I just broke down crying. And I was punching the ground and calling him a fucking asshole. And there's still some anger in there because, I don't know, it's hard living life. And watching your life. And you know what he told me one time? He died a long time ago now. It's been 2014. He said, Keith, I, I finally got my first Ford F-150. No, no. It was uh, my old piece of shit Blue Dakota truck. He goes, Keith, I, I don't like Brent. His name was Brent. I'm like, I want a F-150 so bad, dude. I'm working my ass off. How do I just get it? I don't even care if it's an old piece of shit. I want an F-1. He's like, you know what, Keith? I can see it now. You're married to Ashley. You're going to, your landscape business is going to take off. You're going to get a, a nice little house in Sterling Heights. You're going to have a brand new truck one day and everything's going to work out. He would say these weird and nostalgic things that were like, he would always say weird things that were, that was stuck with you. One of those people. And he listened to a lot of Coldplay. <laughs> What's up, Mo Mo Moses, Moises Morales. Thanks for the 10 bucks. I appreciate it. Thank you.
And it's crazy that everything he predicted happened. My wife and I wrote down on a piece of paper that 22 people that we know are either hooked on drugs or have died from drugs, including my own mother uh, died from a heroin overdose. My little sister, I have two sisters, and my sister came home, found my mom dead or no, no pulse, no brain activity. She overdosed on heroin. What's up, Cecilia? It's an interesting thing, codependent relationships, how somebody that you love so much and care about can have such a hook on you and can literally stop your personal growth and development and stop you from achieving and going and fulfilling your life's purpose and calling and mandate and destiny because of their issues and your codependent patterns with them. And it's very hard to cut people off. And what it takes is a level of strength and unconditional love that says... I love you so much that you cannot stop. My love for you is infinite. I love you unequivocally, but I refuse to tolerate your behavior when you're in my presence or in my home. I'll have to ask you to leave if you're going to continue to behave like this. Not that I'm trying to control you, but if you're affecting my life in my way and it's affecting everything. There's a book, uh, Robin Williams was in a movie what dreams may come where he literally like killed himself to go to hell to find his wife because he loved her so much that the reciprocal what I'm talking about is do you love somebody so much that you're willing to sacrifice and give up everything any hopes or signs of success and where you wear their anger like a coat and go through and walk across fire and brimstone and hell and suffer with them until you carry them out on the other side I believe that surrendering is very important and that's like the first step is accepting and then surrendering. I know that my own wife and I went through so much hell that we put each other through complete fucking hell in the past. But we loved each other so much that we stuck it out. And today we have blossomed into this beautiful, love, loving marriage. We're in love with each other. We have a great relationship. We're both best friends. We're crazily attracted to each other in every way. Well, I know I feel that way about her. And there's nothing that can change that. But we had to go through a period of a lot of suffering to work out all these iniquities and work them out together instead of just bailing on each other. And it's very hard to look in the mirror and face your own selfishness. And I'm bringing this full circle back to you being upset with your business and not being successful yet, or you're not where you want to be. You finally don't have that brand new truck. You didn't pay off your debt. You fight, you didn't get that 20 or 30 or 50 or hundred grand in the bank. Your marriage isn't working. Like, like you're, you get angry and vindictive because you want to be successful. But I really like this idea of you just need to do nothing and be nobody for a while. Stop being concerned with trying to be seen or heard or trying to be important or be validated by anybody anymore and just completely let go and surrender all will and just give up and just go to work. Just be a nobody. Just give up and just go to work for a period of time and surrender and just give your life away into full presence and love of taking care of your employees, taking care of your clients, taking care of your wife and your household taking care of yourself again, making sure you get a good night's sleep. I think that when you can wake up in the morning and pack your lunch and turn the key to your truck and go to a job site and just do the job and just be at a sense of oneness, of equanimity and let go of your constant fighting. Tony Robbins talks about like, I feel like I'm hanging for by a thread. So go put that thing down and come over here. Sometimes our fighting and exasperating and our feeling of suffocating and like we're, we're trying so hard to become successful. It's not happening fast. And all that type of like feeling is actually a self-fulfilling prophecy that keeps generating more of the same. But it might be just some old residual energy of the previous version of yourself from a couple of years ago or all the way down to your childhood. Like what if you have already leveled up and you're here now and you're crushing it? What if you're fine? What if you're doing great? But you haven't actually given yourself a minute to just like realize that you've come so far. You're at a whole new level now. Even if you still live in your little one bedroom apartment, even if you still got problems and you still haven't figured it out, you're already at a whole new level. You here right now, you made it. So just like cutting that off and say, oh, wow, I'm Keith 3.0. You upgrade your identity. You upgrade your identity. Say, 
Papa's got a brand new bag. I don't know the one. <laughs> so, but when you have all these old clients and all this shit in your business, all this old shit hanging around, these old clothes that you don't wear much anymore, you're wearing like, like, fuck that. Dump all those old shitty clients that, I know that sounds like really bad, right? <laughs> if you were to take that and, but raise the prices on everything, raise the stakes on everything and let the old clients fall away. Renew your vows in your marriage. Go and throw out a bunch of old shit that you don't use anymore and upgrade your life. Take yourself to the mall and go buy some new fucking clothes and brand new shoes and just like press the reset button on yourself and realize that the old parts of your identity are just hanging on as dead weight. And it's like, the higher part of yourself wants to just lift off and it just excel very quickly and rapid. So the first step is to cut all the fat, cut all the dead weight. You might have some employee or somebody in your business that somebody that's just dragging you down or some really some client that drives you insane. And you never, ever thought, oh, my God, I could just fire that person. I could just get rid of that client. I could just stop driving all the way out there and doing that fucking thing. Why am I even doing that? What am I afraid of? I've already passed that thing up and I'm still holding on to that difficult conversation. Problem solved. Pow. J Dubs, my friend, Homescapes, Isaiah Navarro, Brandon Gray, Twilight Designs. What's up, Dish the Itch? Quality lawn care service and snow removal. I see all your comments. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks for hanging out. We're going on 50 minutes. Trying to fix employees, lawn care juggernaut is a waste of time. There's another thing. What's up, Sean Rogers? When you upgrade your identity and you have a level of self respect, that is so much higher and you hold yourself to a higher standard when new employees or people come into your business or new clients, well, you won't have any of the problems that you used to have when you were at a lower vibration. You won't have employees just fucking everything up all the time and you feel like you can't control them like at the level that you did, right? Because just your very tone of voice and your body language and your very energy, they know that that ain't going to work. And around here. It's not going to work. You're not going to put up with it. You don't even have to say anything. Clients are going to treat you with respect and either they're going to disqualify themselves from working with you or they're going to, they're going to be very appreciative. And it's weird when you start to become the person that you've always dreamed of becoming, if it's primarily men on here, when you become the man that you've always wanted to become, you start becoming that man and walking and breathing life into that man and letting the old shell go. You've outgrown, you've upgraded your identity, you've outgrown that old shell like a snake sheds the skin and you let the boy go, the teenager go, you let that old, old injured and damaged part of yourself go and you step into this brand new man, this brand new person. Well, actually, a person is really a corporation. So let's say a man. I'm not getting into legalese here, but you've upgraded your identity. I am. I'm fucking crushing it. <laughs> you know, it's like your quality. the quality of your communication is the quality of your response. The quality of your communication is the quality of your response. If you want to new, now know how good you're doing or not doing, look at the quality of the response you're getting from your clients, from your employees, from your wife, from your friends, from anybody. Think about that. All right, I'm out of here. Good night. Peace out, my friends. Yay, yay. <laughs> I'm reading your comments. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to the Untrapped podcast. Please share this episode with somebody you think it will create value for. And we're quickly moving up the rankings in iTunes in the category of entrepreneurship. So if you could please just take a quick moment to click the link below or just go to the iTunes store and type in Untrapped podcast. And please take a moment to leave us a well-written, positive five-star review. It would mean so much and it really, really helps the show. And as always, you can go to my website, keithkelfus.com to learn more. Or you can go to my podcast page on keithkelfus.com forward slash podcast. All right, I'll see you in the next episode.